Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are going to do a very cool little string test. Diodario have just sent me their new XT strings, so we're going to compare those with the regular XS coated strings, which I've been using for some time, and the uncoated phosphor bronze strings as well. A little bit about my journey here, like I didn't like coated strings for the longest time, okay? This is before I'd even tried the Diodario ones. Uh, some of the other popular brands would send me stuff from time to time, and I just... I didn't think they sounded good. They, they, they always sounded kind of flat and a bit dead. You got rid of some of the string noise, like that little finger scratchy thing on the coated string seemed to disappear a little bit, which was sometimes nice. And they did last longer, but the dip for me was so pronounced between a, a fresh set of uncoated strings. They just sounded great out of the box. Particularly at that time, I was doing lots of recording. I was just like, why would I put these strings on? Even if they last longer, why would I put them on when they don't sound as good? But they, with these these Diodario XS ones, I was like, actually, these sound as good as these out of the box to me. And we're going to, I'm kind of curious how this turns out, how the recording of this comes. And uh, I'm going to test myself. But I thought they sounded, if not as good, really, really close. And they do last a lot longer. So the way it works for me, guitars that I'm recording with, if I'm recording like I'm doing a record, then I'm probably going to put regular strings on just for that bit of brightness. This test today might change that. I might just put the coated ones on straight away. But uh, any of the guitars I don't play as often, I always put coated strings on because they do last for a seriously a lot longer. Months and months and months before you have to change them. Whereas a regular set, I might get a week out of them or something. So the uh, coated strings are something that I use now all the time. So yeah, very curious uh, to test these ones out. And I've left the old strings on. Now I haven't, these are these coated strings, uh, but I haven't changed them for... Uh, uh, quite a while months two or three months probably maybe even more than that so uh, what I thought I'd do is leave them on I'm gonna take I, I might start chatting to you I'm gonna do the string changes while I'm still filming here uh, it doesn't take me long to change strings you can see how that goes I'll try and think of something vaguely interesting to talk about while I'm doing that um, and what I've got here as well so I normally record my acoustic guitar it's plugged in and I actually plug it into the Kemper uh, I use this patch called acoustic JR shelter it only says UNI, maybe unicorn or something like that. I don't know. Um, but it's just a patch that I found on it, you know, for free. Uh, and I use that on the Kemper. Uh, just it's plugged in. But there is a microphone in this guitar. So we're kind of hearing the microphone there. The acoustic guitar generally gets picked up by a little microphone. I have a, a, a microphone hidden in my hat here, which is the main reason I wear the hat. I'm not that fussed about losing my hair or whatever. But it, it records my head really well, even if I move my, my head around, like when I'm talking to you and looking at different things. It, it's, lapel mics tend to sound a bit lumpy. And anyway, I've got as well... Uh, and ad in addition to that, a, a really nice Neumann U87. This is an old vintage one, used to belong to Hugh Padgham, probably uh, recorded a few police songs in its time. Anyway, so we've got that uh, plugged up, and that'll be just going directly into my uh, Logic door. I'll probably put... Uh, a 1073 plug in on it or whatever just to make it sound nice but i'll make it sound as nice as i can and i'll leave it the same for all of the different ones of course so i've just finished doing all of the demos it's taken over an hour and i don't expect there are many people that want to sit through an hour of me changing strings and telling bad jokes but i'll pop the whole thing at the end in case you're kind of curious so what I'm going to do now is play you the clips of the strumming, the strumming with the fingers and the finger style, one after the other. We'll call them A, B, C and D. One of them will be the old strings, before I'd even done any of the string changes today, so a three or four month old set of strings. Then there'll be uncoated, uh, coated XS strings and coated XT strings. So it'd be a really good idea for you to have a listen and see if you can figure out which is which or which one you prefer the sound of.
So I'm hoping you found that interesting. A little bit about my opinion now about which is which. Obviously there was a huge jump going from the completely dead strings to the brand new uncoated strings. That was a huge jump and I really felt a difference there. But the difference between very old strings and a new set of uncoated is going to be extreme. So it was then going from that to coated and then coated again. You know, it, it, the difference wasn't quite so noticeable. There was a difference, particularly from uncoated to the first coated strings, which is weird because the coated strings are ones that I've used. I'm not sure if they were the ones that were on before. I just can't remember what I put on, but they're definitely ones that I use fairly regularly on different guitars. So... It was weird that they felt kind of lumpy and I didn't particularly like the feeling of them as much. It's surprising, but I'm just being honest. The second set when I moved to the XT definitely felt more like what I was used to. So that made me start to think, well, maybe the ones that were originally on there weren't coded at all. But they also weren't very corroded. So I'm pretty sure they must have been coded. Otherwise, they would have been corroded by now. So a uh, little kind of interesting. I'm not sure exactly what to make of it myself. I'm really curious. At, at this stage, I haven't done the mix of the video, so I'm not able to comment on the, the audio quality of each one. For the feeling and my, the, the sound in the room as I've been playing, I really like the uncoated strings. I'm going to go back and have a listen and see which one I would use when I'm recording. In fact, I've got a few sessions coming up in the next few weeks, so I do need to sort out which strings I'm going to put on this guitar. My feeling right now is that these, the, the last ones, the XT, would be my go-to strings that I want for a long life because uncoated strings don't last. Like, they just don't. You, get, they, you know, finger sweat and gunk gets in them and they, yeah, they just don't sound as good. In the old days, in inverted commas, before I played around with these, they would sound better at the beginning, but after three, four days, like one gig or whatever, one sweaty gig, they wouldn't sound as good as coated strings would sound for a month. So it's... For most of you out there, if you, unless you're in a you know making records kind of situation, like really doing serious recording, or you really really care about your tone, I can't imagine uncoated strings being a viable option. Okay, sometimes if you're really going for that extra tonal balance or whatever you want, that I think it's brightness more than anything else. It's not so much tonal balance. In fact, I think the coated strings maybe have better balance. But uh, uncoated strings, when they're fresh, have definitely got a bit of extra zing, which is sometimes good. For fingerstyle, it can get, seem to give a little bit more definition to the note because it, the, the attack of it seems to, to happen a little differently. Maybe it's the, the feeling of the, 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 or the sound of the, string, uh, the finger hitting the string, which is slightly muted by the coated strings. I'm just guessing here. I'm not exactly sure. It's very, very subjective, like the way that we approach strings and the ones that we prefer and how they feel to us is going to be different for everyone. So I think the most important thing is to go and try a whole bunch of strings. Uh, one of the things that I do when I get a new guitar is I try them with lots of different strings, particularly acoustic guitars. I really like the, the Phosphor Bronze on this particular one, but like the uh, one of the mating up there it usually just gets straight Phosphor, not Phosphor Bronze. So that it, it it just depends. Another one I, I think is an AD20 one. I write on the back they've got a little sticker that reminds me what strings but I literally just do what I just did with these different strings for each of those different guitars when I get a new guitar try out all of the different strings that I've got and see which one fits that instrument best so it's not just about your preference of sound but which one feels best with your particular instrument so I think that that's an important uh, thing it was a shock to me actually the first time I, I did I can't remember who it was that, that mentioned the, the you know finding the right strings for your particular or that particular instrument not just like oh I like these strings so uh, when I started playing about with that I really did notice that different strings reacted differently with different instruments so my recommendation for you would be to get a few different types of strings coated not coated phosphor phosphor bronze 8020 whatever and then try them out you know, I know it would definitely seem a little bit wasteful to just put them on for five minutes, chop them off and change again. So maybe just record them and play with them for a couple of weeks and then change and record it again if you've got some recording equipment at home. Otherwise, you're just going to have to go with, uh, you know, your feelings about the strings, which is a reliable indicator. <laughs> Music's about feeling, uh, you know, playing guitar is a feeling thing more than anything else. So, yeah, how you feel about it is actually a pretty big deal. 
I've done so much talking now. A lot of string changing, a lot of talking today, <laughs> um, unusually. So look, I really hope you found this video interesting. Like I said, I'm going to put the full test with all the changes, string changes, including some really bad jokes and mumbling and stuff and, and some long bits where I'm just changing strings. I'm going to put all of that at the end of this video. So I hope this has been informative and educational and maybe given you some inspiration for trying out some new strings for your particular guitar. Have yourself a fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more lessons and stuff like this very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm just going to do some strumming, a little bit of finger strumming, a little bit of finger picking, then change strings and we'll hear the difference between these different types. So uh, just check the level is okay. So uh, here's picked, just a... So I've got that pointed here right at the uh, right at the join where the neck meets the body, this little bit. That's generally where I put it, if I'm just putting one microphone on. Anyway, I'm going to move that out of the way while I uh, do the string change. So a few things about string changes. Uh, I've got that cable in there. That's going to be a bit of a pain in the bum. I'll just have to pop that out and hopefully it won't make too much of a click. Um, interestingly, I couldn't find my regular string winder. So I'm using this string winder here. I've let me hold up to the thing. This is ancient. Where's the where's the motion? The, the, there's the go. This thing is it was the first string winder I ever ever bought. It is very very old. Still works. I don't know how come plastic in those days seems to last longer than plastic these days. But um, what you're seeing now is the way that I most commonly change strings. Um, I have got a nice little mat and a neck stand and all of that, but. To be honest, most of the time when I'm changing, I just want to get it done nice and quick. So get the strings loosened off first. I never like cutting them when they're tight. I know some people do. Um, and I cut them. I always cut them around the 12th fret. I've got these big industrial strength clippers, but you don't need all of that, really. And we take these off. Interested to see how long this takes. Like I said, if it gets boring, I'll just zoom through it because I'm not sure I'm going to run have enough things to talk about. Um, now normally, I'm not going to do it today, but normally when I change uh, strings, I uh, give the guitar a little bit of a clean as well. I'm not that fussed about having a clean guitar all the time, but I do like the, the neck to be clean. Um, so quite often I'll clean the neck with a little bit of oil. For a long time I used lemon oil, but I heard recently that it's not so good. Um, so I started using a different one by Nomad. I can't, it's sitting over there, but I can't see the, see the name of it. Let's put these on. I don't want to lose those pins. Of course, one just fell on the floor. That is par for the course. Okay, so we're going to start with regular uh, uncoated strings. So we can hear each step of the way. How they come out. So uh, obviously the... Diodario ones are color coded, which is always makes life a little bit simpler, but you're still going to need to see which is which. Acoustic guitar strings, if you haven't watched one of my acoustic string videos, I always put a little kink in them, poke the string in, poke the peg in, and then pull it up tight. Stops it slipping around later because otherwise the ball can get kind of caught on the end of the peg and 
then it gives it a bit of a jolt later on which you probably don't want really um, well you probably don't want you definitely don't want but it doesn't take too long if you once you got used to it, especially if you're not going through the whole cleaning your guitar thing uh, it shouldn't make too much of a difference uh, just looking for the slot so the slot is in the right place that is important makes a bit of a difference <clears throat> yeah I think I get extra bonus points for being able to do this without putting my glasses on as well although I might need to at some point luckily I can feel which is the the thinner or thicker strings still at this point um, okay so like I said I pop them in uh, push the peg in give them all a little bit of a pull and then I chuck it down here wrap the, the spare strings around and then just pull them through one at a time it's pretty basic I'm not doing anything particularly fancy with my string changes the one thing I, I do is I always pull it through just from the next pin and then he's, I'm like, which way do I wrap it around? That way, into the middle. And where's my little winder jobby? Of course, it's not going to be where I want it on my seat. And then, yeah, hold the string. Give it a good little wind on. Normally I'm after like one or two turns around the sun there. Let's just make sure that's not coming out and then I don't worry about tuning them up of course uh, as I go I'm just uh, geez, I'm gonna have to get my glasses out at some point I'm not gonna be able to get away with doing a string change without glasses I don't think into the middle hold it in Whoop. so uh, just trying to think I don't even know all of the guitar jokes I know are really bad so I'm probably not gonna go into guitar jokes um, my favourite clean one, I suppose, is, uh, did you hear about the peanut that was walking through the forest? It was assaulted. So, uh, yeah, you can beat me up for that one. Um, maybe we should get some more. If you've got any good, good, and I, I'm putting an emphasis on good, because I don't want the comments just to fill up with horrible jokes, but if you've got any good music jokes or guitar jokes, so I'm going to do an electric guitar version of this test as well. So if you want to save yourself hearing a whole bunch of really horrible jokes, then uh, you could leave. Let me know some in the comments. Um, oh, what was the other one? I told my daughter a good joke the other day. Um, what kind of dog does a magician have? <laughs> and it's a Labracadabrador. Isn't that good? Boom! To put on some f false laughter there for that little bit, yeah. A labracadabra, a labracadabrador. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, excuse all of that. I need something to do while I'm doing this because I don't want to just sit here in silence. Um, let's see. Let's through. Managed to get most of the way through without poking myself in the eye as well. That's always a good thing. He says just as he's about to poke himself in the eye. Um, there would be good reason to uh, do the strings that are closest to the nut first of all, but I've always just done it this way and I don't know. So those creatures of habit and all of that. Um, now, I normally make this easier for myself. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, making a bit of a pig's ear of this, I'm sorry. Uh, that way. There we go. Das ist easier. For sure. But string changing isn't that hard. I used to see, get messages from people all the time saying oh, they always take their guitar to the shop to get their strings changed. I'm like, it's not hard. There's very little that can really go wrong. Unless, you know, as long as you get the windings on the right way. Um, but, but even again, if you if you get the right windings on the wrong way, oh come on, don't make me get my glasses out. Right, I've got right to the end here. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Let's put a little bit of extra pull through on the thinner string. A little, a little bit of extra winding. But I don't know how long this has taken, but I'm sure it's not very long. Um, yeah, come on. 
string finder though obviously amazing little tool you can get electric ones if you're feeling super lazy but i don't feel like it's that much effort to wind the string on uh, Okay, so the strings are on. Now I will clip the end if I can find my little tool thing. There we go. Gigantic electrician's uh, thing. I always just leave a you know, centimeter coming out the end or something. I don't think it needs to be much more than that. Some people do it different. If I'm leaving them on for a long time, I know that these strings aren't, aren't gonna be on for ages. I sometimes get the pliers out and twist a little L shape on the end so I don't stab myself with them, which can be a, a useful thing to do. Oh, way high. Yeah. with all this tech I still tend to use a Peterson Strobo stomp app there are loads of great tuners around but I always seem to have this one phone's usually not too far it's pretty accurate now do the pull through here as well just so that you all can hear what a big difference it makes so in theory it's in tune already drifting though but one of the really important things to do when you're doing strings is this pull through so I hold the hold the strings here and I'm giving it a good pull I'm just using like a lever like that and giving the strings a good pull through especially if I got a gig like I don't you don't want to change strings and run on stage and start playing because your guitar will be completely out of tune had a couple of times where I've forgotten to do it or a tech's forgotten to give them a good enough string pull before playing and yeah normally I just do it twice maybe if I'm doing it at a gig I'd do it a bit more <laughs> often I give it a thrash as well so I'll just like really bash the guitar strings up but I'm not going to worry about doing that that much but you'll hear now how much they drop it's down to a D dropped a tone as well and a semitone there wow it's so much zingier it's, it's like I'd forgotten about how how nice it is actually with a new set of strings. Let's get that to try and get it to roughly the same place. sound way nicer so much brighter and so much more clarity nice
definitely, definitely nicer. <laughs> Like this is an um, like the difference between the dead old strings that were on there. To be honest, I thought they were okay, and I'm already surprised. Like that is really, really different. Lots brighter. Yeah, just it's really nice. I feel really bad the fact that I'm now gonna rip them off. Actually, to be honest, I'm like this doesn't it just doesn't feel right. But I don't think there's any other way of doing this test successfully just found this bit of wire on the floor i thought it was one of the pins and i'm like come on that's a random thing to find on the floor anyway piece of electrical cable okay i'm just gonna have to take them off i know this ever all definitely recorded okay it looks like so okay uh like i said if oh, why can i never find these things um yeah hopefully it's not going to take too long to do all of these uh, jokes on postcards I'm trying to think what else I can tell you about I did I was super uh, happy to find this string winder I must say that was something that I was like I can't believe I've just found the string winder that I like all of the years when I was like woodshedding and practicing loads and doing tons of gigs and all of that this was the string winder you know and I used the same one I think until I think Diodaria might have been sent me one uh, with it, and it's got like it's a lot nicer, smoother, runs runs smoother. Oh, come on, um, it runs smoother, and it's got uh, the little hook on it for pulling the pins out if they get stuck. Oh come on, why are you being difficult today? I'm really sorry, strings. That I know that's seemingly a bit excessive to put them on and play for five minutes and take them off again, but. Of course, now the pins are going to get stuck and I'm going to be wishing I had that other <laughs> string. <laughs> but now oh, they've come out. Okay. Put the pegs up there. Oh, there we go, strings. That's one set off. Um, so, yeah, I really hope you're having a great day. Um, I'll ex have to call for an apology already if you hear loads of funny noises. There's a storm coming and I can hear occasional bits of thunder and the dog's starting to freak out a bit. So... Um, if I might have to comfort the dog, it looks like it's hasn't uh, hasn't eventually absolutely tipped it down. Okay, now regular coated strings is what we're going for next. Um, I'm sure, the packaging's different here than it was last time I've got some of these. Anyway, um, yeah, and also I don't know what is going on, but there's been a whole bunch of uh, army helicopters flying around, so I'm kind of hoping that things have, in the world have not got even worse. Now, why are these all stuck together? That's bit annoying when that happens um yeah it was a chinook flying i could actually see it flying out from outside my window which is a little bit weird um so hopefully there's not some horrible things kicking off the day i'm filming this is the, oh, the russian president's just been on about some you know western terrorism or some stupid stuff like that anyway let's not go there this is a guitar video who wants to think about that miserable stuff in the middle of a guitar video. Um, okie dokie, come on, you go through there. There we go. Um, I always find the unfurling of the strings is the most dangerous bit for getting a poke in the eye. But uh, I haven't had one of those for quite a few years now, thank God. Um, strings are a funny thing, because people ask about strings all the time, like, what strings do you use? I'd, I'd, it is. It does make a difference. And uh, I've used a few different brands over the years. The biggest 
difference was like when I used really cheap strings, I had an endorsement deal with a company uh, made really basically just <laughs> terrible strings, but they they did endorsement deals and, you know, it meant that when I was on tour, I could change strings every gig and didn't have to worry about it so much. Uh, but the strings were just really not very good. They were cheap and that was good, <laughs> I guess, but being that I got them for free, it didn't make a huge difference. Um, but uh, we had to change strings all the time and that was really frustrating to just having to literally be, you know, bre lit breaking strings even within the gig. In the, I think in the end, the whole band had the deal with the, the, um, this, the counterfeit stones back in the day. Um, I think the whole band ditched them in the end uh, because we all just got sick of breaking strings all the time. Even the bass, bass strings were breaking in gigs. I mean, that's kind of unheard of, but anyway. So... Uh, I'm not sure what other string stories I, I've got for you, really. For a long time, I used... Uh, I shouldn't talk about this with, uh, you know, Diodario string video, but I used Maxima gold strings for a long time when I was a kid. And it was only because they were gold. Like, I don't think they even sounded any different to uh, any other strings. And they didn't last very long, and they corroded quickly and stuff. But I think I like telling my parents that I could afford gold strings. Like, really? Pretty sad, hey? Anyway things that we learn in life as we go along on this merry journey. Um, now that one I just went a little bit further than I like to because it's gone around the other side and generally I try and keep the strings out to one side just to, so it's easier to trim and they don't get in the way. But let's see. Pull it through, wrap it into the centre and get winding. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, look. Speedy Gonzalez string changes going on here. Somebody sent me a video a while ago that there was a guy doing it as a world record thing. Um, the most string changes or the fastest string changes or something. I don't think I'm going to be winning that anytime soon. But it's going relatively painlessly, I feel. Like, it could be going a lot worse. I'm trying to do it and entertain you guys at the same time. Badly. I'm just trying to think of what good stories to tell you about from Guitar Land. Um, got all. Uh, I'll just tell you what I'm up to. I've got some uh, some workshops coming up. Uh, uh, one's in Italy and one's in Canada. The one in Italy is uh, some Rolling Stone songs. Very small group. We haven't even advertised the workshop. But I've uh, I've been working on quite a few Stone songs and playing in Open G and open E a bit more than usual which is good um, I've got a whole in fact I've the one thing that has been most satisfying the last couple of weeks is just the songs that I'm learning are just great songs I'm in the middle of learning uh, Never Going Back Again by Fleetwood Mac uh, incredible Lindsay Buckingham guitar playing in that song it's just absolutely gorgeous so I'm doing that one and I'm doing uh, what's the other Fleetwood Mac one called um Rhiannon, uh, which is, I mean, it's electric guitar part. I've been practicing it on acoustic mostly, to be honest, but um, I don't think uh, you get back in there. Um, so I've been working on that, and I've been working on uh, Red Bud Tree by Mark Knopfler, and I've got a fantastic story, Val. I'm going to save that story for another time. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, that's going well as well, sounds really good. It's a lot of fun doing tunes like that and it makes my job so nice when I've got um, a bunch of good songs to learn for you guys and girls out there. Oh, I'm curious how this is gonna sound. I'm really like, I hope it sounds as good as the other one so I can just only use coated strings from now on. That would be wicked. I've got a feeling that they, they're gonna feel slightly different so some of it, the strings are a funny thing, you know, like it's not just about um, what they sound like. Obviously, that's kind of the most important thing, really. But the the feeling that they give you under your fingers is also pretty important. So like when they're slippery can be good and especially not having like that crunchy noise when you're shifting around bar chords or whatever. Nobody likes that. Um, but uh, sometimes that slinkiness can be too slinky, you know. So there's definitely a balance uh, to be had 
when it comes to that, I'll just check everything's working properly again. Yep, it does seem to be, which is good. Gonna get the old tuner up again. Come on, why aren't you working now? There's some of the rattles gone. I can notice it already. When I was doing this before, there was like a rattle. different and this is interesting because I use these strings they don't they don't have the the could be that, especially when I listen back, the other ones might have been too harsh, too ringy. These definitely feel rounder to me. leading me to play in a different way, which is really interesting. What feels nice is different. That's finger style. Oh, finger, finger strumming first, wasn't it? Definitely not feeling as bright. isn't as round either. 
And these are things that are weird because this is probably what I normally use. a little bit more which could be just like the tension of the string is slightly different maybe I had the original phosphor prompts on first <laughs> okay. they weren't rusty enough could it be these strings get a little bit brighter as the coating wears thin I do like, it's a lot less, you get some, there is squeak there, but like I can make it squeak by pressing hard, but if I'm pressing less, you get some, but it's not as squeaky. I'm liking the, there's things about the fatness that I like. say is that they're perhaps not as bright as the first set but they may be more balanced so this is an interesting part now where I think they needed that little bit of playing in time definitely not going like I don't like this but yeah they're different definitely definitely different and that's an interesting thing I'm so curious now to try the other ones okay I've had a longer play on those let me get that mic out of the way so I've only just noticed as one does in the middle of filming that I forgot to plug the guitar in so I wasn't using the Kemper thing which I normally use for acoustic guitar but hey ho that's the kind of thing that happens when you're doing these different videos to what you normally do because the routines are all wobbly. But hey ho, we've still luckily got that beautiful U87 on it. So I'm hoping that I haven't spent my afternoon changing strings for no reason at all. And that I can't use the video. That would really suck. Big kahunas. Don't think that's going to happen. So that's, that microphone's lovely and I recorded with it just yesterday. I was working on, a, on an original song. So I'm fairly confident that the mic will sound nice. 
little bit of EQ treatment. Like I said, just once, I'm not going to EQ each string set differently because that obviously would defeat the purpose of doing a test in the, slight, in the slightest. But it's also worth getting as well that you can definitely change the sound of a guitar quite a lot with by using different types of EQ. And uh, I nearly always use uh, Neve 1073 preamps. Um, I have actual real world ones that I use uh, in the studio on the other side of this room where I do my filming. Um, but uh, for most of my videos, I use the, the software version made by Universal Audio. And it sounds, I've A-B tested them and they sound like essentially the same. They're ever so slightly different, but I wouldn't have even said one was better or worse. They were just ever so slightly different. Okay, so now we're going to try these uh, new strings, which is slightly more traditional packaging than that other white set, ah, which is that these are the new ones called an XT. Um, they build it as traditional feel. So I'm, I'm expecting these to feel a bit more like a regular string, um, like an uncoated string. That's what I'm anticipating from the packaging. Maybe I shouldn't have read the packaging because I should have done a Paul Davidson test of myself blind and had one of my friends come and do the string changes for me. That would have been good on lots of different levels. But actually, it hasn't been too bad, has it? I don't think it's even... How long has this whole video taken so far? 43 minutes only so far. Dog's woken up. No, Ziggy, I'm doing string changes, mate. Uh, you can't really come... Oh, you can put your paws up here. Just pause. Pause. Hop. Hop. No? No, you just want to see. Okay. Uh, kind of busy right now, dog. So, um, can you just give us a few minutes? Yeah, go on. Go back to bed and I'll play with you when I'm finished doing this. I'm on my last one now, Ziggs. Last set of strings. She's looking at the door like, come on, let me outside. I'm like, no, I'm not letting you up in the middle of the video. If you want to come and hang in the studio, you have to wait while I'm filming. That's how it goes. She knows the rules. Um, so, there you go. This is the last, last set of this. I think I've changed more strings today than I have in the previous six months. I'm really lazy with string changing, and it's probably mostly to do with the... The fact that there's that there is coated strings now because it means that I can just pop a set of strings on and not have to worry about it for ages. No, Ziggy, you're not going out. Yeah, she's just going to be sitting there making life difficult for me now. Actually, I just absolutely pinched my skin on my finger then. <laughs> Got to get too close to the string winder. So I'm like, yeah, I love my old school string winder, but if it does that to me again, it'll be going in the memory box. Ouch. Um, never to be seen again. Um, okie dokie. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. So these, these do feel less uh, coated than the other ones did. You can just feel like as far as the feeling of them, just even putting them on now, I can feel that there's, yeah, slightly different feeling going on, which is probably a good thing. But like I said, sometimes the coated slinky string feeling is actually pretty cool. So I'm not suggesting that that's always a drama. Like that's, it's not something to be concerned about. It's just a different feeling. And for sure, different people will enjoy different string feelings. Um, Siggy, no, you're waiting. Just wait and be quiet. Film in. Um... So I wouldn't be put off when you hear people say, oh, they're too slinky or they're whatever. Because it's just a matter of preference. Some people really like a kind of a slinky, smooth string. And other people don't. And that's totally all right to like different things. I don't think... Uh, in fact, I think it's a kind of a good thing for humans if we all... Oh, you get back in there. If we all like different things, that's what makes us all unique, right? If we all like the same things, there'd only be one band. And everyone would like them. And there wouldn't be any point in having more bands, would there, if we all like the same thing? So, uh, yeah, we should celebrate our differences and enjoy it. Um, God. I wonder if I'm going to end up putting this whole thing in the video or whether I'm just going to speed it all up. I don't know at this point. Maybe I just do a... 
but too long didn't read at the beginning and give you the results and then show all of this stuff for those who are super keen to watch the whole string change monotony um, and then yeah we'll see do, do, do. Up. oh Ziggy stop looking at me I'm not letting you out yet I'm in the middle of some end you must be able to see, you must be able to see that I'm doing something right now Ziggy bed bed go to bed Bed! Don't look at me like that. Oh, you poor dog. Must be so terrible when you can't do exactly whatever you want, whenever you want. Okay. Now she's a really good dog normally. <coughs> Occasional, like, in the middle of the night she'll wake us up, check, wanting to go and... She'll spot a fox or something outside and decide that she wants to go outside and play at, like, 3 a.m. But that happens pretty infrequently, so generally speaking, I think she's a good girl. Okay, last one. Let's go. And I'm hoping that I love these so much that I'm going to leave them on for forever. Although, saying that, I haven't got, I've only got one set of them, so... <laughs> if they're going to last, if they're going to stay on forever, they're going to need to last a very long time. Okay, I left it that a little bit too long, but anyway, hey-ho. A few too many wines on this one happens, so that's okay if occasionally it goes a bit that way. Okay, let's give that little pegs a little bit of help there. Okay, don't need that. Ah, oh, let's chop the, chop the ends off before I poke myself in the eye, because that's never fun. Uh, yeah, as long as I don't chop one of these strings, because this is the actually the only set of these ones that I've got. So I definitely, definitely don't want to accidentally chop the string off. Been pretty lucky. I was just thinking that they were probably going to break or something. Um, Okie dokie. <coughs> Time to get it in tune. Wait. Oh, God. Did it give me a heart attack? I was like, don't play it now. Oh. Oh, so that, that's a great example of it, where it didn't sit in the, I didn't put it, put the bend, bend it enough before I put it in the peg hole, so it must have been catching on the end of the peg. It's exactly that problem I was just talking about, why, why I bend the pegs, but bend the string. you want some howling wolf come on dog jokes hound dog what do you think ziggy's favorite song is <laughs> i think ziggy's favorite song is going to be celine d or anything by celine dion because she loves cheese Whee! god that's a bad joke if there was ever a bad joke i just told it Hey, do you like cheese again? You do, don't you? Come on, come and sit. I'll say hello to the people then. See you Just up, 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 up. There you go. She's been good as gold all morning while I've been filming, haven't you? Hey? Hmm? Is that okay? Yeah, okay. I let you cuddle me. Now let me out the, out the door. No, nope. you have to wait again until I finish recording the next bit. And then I'll let you out.
get, I think I'm gonna have to go and let the dog out. She's making all sorts of noises, so maybe she need to wee. Okay, where was I before I was really interrupted by my dog? Oh. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting. This sounds to me very much like uh, <laughs> the regular ones. These sound like the regular ones. feel like the regular ones. really funny I think I like these more than the last one so I'm liking these at this point more than the, more than the coded strings well these these are coded more than the other the, uh, the ones in the white packet these are XT the other ones for what XS I don't even remember ah where is it written XS There's a bit of this. Fret rattle, but I don't think I did exactly that on those first strings.
I really like it. Now, I'm a, I've got a little bit of confusion going on in my head because a little bit I'm thinking, hey, those first strings, I really like those. There, there was a, a definitely a feeling of uh, euphoria is a bit strong, but to go from like really, really old dead strings to brand new fresh uncoated strings was a jump. I really noticed it and I was like, whoa, this feels so much better. Then to go through the coded strings and out of this, I'm kind of feeling like this is really nice, but I can't, it's, I'm finding it difficult to judge against the feeling of the first set because that was so fresh and I was like, wow, I love that, I love that feeling. So I'm, I'm wondering if I went from this back to the, the uncoded, whether I'd have that same joy.